Third is, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. How do you know that to be the case? Because in October of 2000, I wrote a prototype for President Congressman Tom Feeney at the company I worked for in Oviedo, Florida that did just that. And would that program that you designed be something that elections officials could detect? They'd never see it. And your testimony is under oath? Yes, sir. And the testimony you've given is true? Yes, sir. Thank you. Because they're stealing elections. How can you say that? And what are the vulnerabilities there is that you're just surmising? Like I'm not surmising it. I have a very strong understanding of statistical analysis. The U.S. CERT Center actually put out a full warning, which I'm sure your station can get a copy of, warning that the way Diebold systems are architected in the way the tabulators communicate to the central state tabulation center is subject to foreign national hacking. They put out a warning about it. Now, what do you suggest that the government should tell Diebold to do to make their machines less vulnerable? You can't make voting machines less vulnerable. Paper ballots, please. There is no system electronic in the world that cannot be hacked. This is not a Democrat-Republican issue. Americans do not want to believe that we have people stealing our elections, and they must come to the realization there are people in this country who want to steal elections, and we must stop them. Last year, without notifying state officials, Leon County, Florida's election supervisor, Ion Sancho, challenged computer experts to hack into his multi-million dollar optical scan voting machines, and they did. The company, in fact, said that it was impossible to manipulate the code on this card. My research team analyzed the source code in the Diebold voting machine, and we found a lot of security problems and wrote a report that got a lot of national attention and led to a lot of the debate around whether we need voter verified paper records or not in electronic voting machines. Now, a highly confidential study commissioned by the state of Maryland to investigate Professor Rubin's concerns has surfaced, indicating that Rubin was right. Their Diebold touchscreen machines do not work, are not secure, and can easily be hacked. Experts say the only way to know if the vote is secure is to have optically scanned paper ballots and voter verified paper trails with random audits. The state of Maryland had spent $55 million on a deep old election system. They asked computer consultants Raba Technologies to test it. Raba were able to break into the machines in around 10 seconds. The exit poll company Edison Research, which does all our primaries, tells us that the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval is plus or minus 4%. Let's see, Arkansas buried 6.7%, Alabama 15.7%, Tennessee 8.8%, Georgia 12.4%, Texas 9.9%, Massachusetts 7.8%, Oklahoma 6.8%, Mississippi 10.4%, Ohio 10%, and New York 12%. Jesus! And the odds of New York having exit polls that are 12% off is 1 in 126,000. This year, the about 80% of the vote nationally will be cast on electronic voting machines. There is no verifiability. They have uh, decided that they would not include in the audit about 37 or 40 percent of the ballots. So as citizens, we're unable to verify that our vote is being counted correctly. We're unable to verify that there's no malfeasance going on because 40% is a very big chunk of the, the vote. The shift is all going in one way, which indicates someone's cheating. The public is not being told that the votes are being flipped. What do you think is the answer? Uh, we have to have um, universal hand counting paper ballots. We know it happens. And not, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, and I knew I was observing voter fraud at that time. And I was being played as a sucker in this whole process for the choreograph supposedly illegal election. But that wasn't all. This happened several more times during my two occasions to be full observer that I witnessed these things. I just didn't realize 
the corruption that I felt I was seeing. And I wondered if I should even bother to vote or do anything at all. Well, I guess I did decide to do something because I'm here. There were more ballots cast than there were people signed up for that precinct. There were more ballots cast than there were people signed up for that precinct. Now, a recent study found the names of more than 1.8 million deceased persons still registered to vote on state rolls. Roughly 2.75 million people are registered to vote in more than one state. Now, this is a staggering number, given the close margins that decide many elections. What the headlines haven't told you, was there rampant voter fraud in Maine? What happened there over the weekend does more than just raise eyebrows. It is enough to make you question, was the caucus fixed? There was evidence of vote suppression and hiding public records and breaking election laws. Um, my own Board of Elections director has firmly stated we will be getting new machines. We will not be getting hand-counted paper ballots. and. Um, she is open to possibly citizens influencing the type of machine, but if we do not take a stand for some machine, we're going to get probably paperless there's, DRE. There, yes, there's a simple solution for that. She's got to be replaced. <laughs> this is a, not an area where we can compromise. There is a conflict of interest. In fact, it's not only a matter of cyber hacking, it's a matter of machines arriving at the polling place with thousands of votes already loaded in them before the polls even open. Essentially, in the audit, they were erasing votes that the electronic voting machine paper record indicated had been cast. And $100 million on machines where you can't do an independent audit. There's no way to know if the machine is right. It's pretty embarrassing. Maryland's Today, governor, Robert Ehrlich, says just take it low tech, back to good old paper. Let's err on the side of safety, get an election everybody can count on. Can these elections be rigged? Can somebody go in you know, and I'm change the outcome? I'm a lawyer, I'm a governor, a former Congress. The system can be manipulated. Governor Robert Ehrlich, the uh, Republican governor of the state of Maryland, thank you for this. Without a verifiable paper trail, electronic voting machines are an open invitation to election fraud and manipulation of the democratic process. But security on many machines is at best lax, so lax in fact that a hacker could change the outcome of an election without even touching the voting machines. All of the kinds of voting systems out there can be tampered with. Votes could be lost or stolen. Secondly, that there uh, that it is an urgent problem. This is not some sort of theoretical problem that might happen someday in the future, but that it is urgent. Holt says it's not too late to intervene for the November elections, but time is running out. An expert would need no more than two minutes to reprogram the machines and distort the vote count. That's comforting. Chris Hood says stealing an election is a lot easier than you may think. It would take maybe a dozen people to fix a national election. A dozen people to fix it. Just a dozen. There could be collusion between a candidate, a party, and the company that supplies the computers. Exactly. And there is a, there are many of the companies, a number of them have had um, felony convictions of various employees as a result of bribery of election officials. There's a case in Louisiana where there is a... And so the fourth discovery, and this is the most important, is that we were able to, to actually demonstrate of an, an attack that a single person, a single voter could do at a single machine that would virally propagate all the way back to the election central headquarters. It was Joseph Stalin that said so clearly, and he, we better pay attention to what he has to say, those who cast their votes decide nothing. Those who count the votes decide everything.